In its efforts to destroy Ukraine's statehood, the Kremlin is increasingly forced to rely on foreign labor for its military-industrial complex and now on foreign troops. This demonstrates the inherent weakness of Russia itself, which is unable to fulfill the whims of a president, according to an editorial in the British newspaper The Guardian. Journalists note that around one million soldiers are believed to have been killed or wounded in Russia's war in Ukraine. In addition to the vast Ukrainian civilian and military toll, average Russian casualties reportedly rose to a new height of more than 1,200 soldiers a day in September. Russia has four times as many men, but a war described by its fighters as a meat grinder is rapidly diminishing the ranks and using conscripts has a political cost. On some estimates, seven times more Russian soldiers have died since the invasion than Soviet troops died in Afghanistan in a decade. It is noted that Russia's population is four times larger than Ukraine's, but the Kremlin is still forced to import not only weapons but also people. The policy of stimulating the birth rate in Russia has generally failed. The country's population is shrinking and aging, which is why labor migrants have become a common sight in Russian cities. But the pandemic and then this full-scale war upset this balance. Now the Russian economy lacks about 4.8 million workers and the front in Ukraine only worsens the situation, constantly sucking more and more people out of Russia. The authors of the article emphasize, against this backdrop, the Kremlin has tried to attract foreign mercenaries, enticing citizens of India, Nepal and other countries to military service with money. Now it has reached North Korean soldiers. At the same time, citizens of African countries are being recruited to work at military factories, which became known recently. President Vladimir Putin's bid to annex territory into a greater Russia is being backed by foreign military personnel and workers. It says less about the strength of growing alliances, worrying as they may be, and more about the fundamental domestic problems his country faced even before he launched the invasion that has devastated Ukraine and killed so many of Russia's own citizens. The Guardian concludes. Recently, the head of the main intelligence directorate of Ukraine, Kirill Budanov, stated that about 11,000 North Korean soldiers are undergoing training in the east of the Russian Federation. According to him, these soldiers will be ready for war in Ukraine by November the 1st. Later, South Korean intelligence reported that North Korea would send 12,000 troops to the war in Ukraine, including 1,500 special forces. At the same time, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said that he cannot yet confirm these reports. North Korea's Special Operations Forces, known as SOF, have been sent to Russia to fight for war in Ukraine, Telegraph has reported. A video that appeared on Friday showed North Korean troops arriving at Russian bases in the country's far east Vladivostok region, picking up military equipment in long queues. The personnel reportedly sent to Vladivostok are presumed to have been sourced from the 200,000-strong ranks of the SOF. Being one of the most secretive units of its kind in the world, SOF appear loyal and highly trained but lack in advanced military equipment. It's primarily used to probe and test South Korean defenses. South Korea's spy agency, the NIS, said on Friday that North Korean troops are training in Russian bases in Vladivostok, Ashuriysk, Khabarovsk, and Vlagovshensk. Some 1,500 special forces were transferred to the port city of Vladivostok, with further deployments expected in the near future, the agency has reported. Ukraine has also warned of North Korean soldiers' deployment to war in Ukraine. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said with reference to intelligence information on October 18 that 10,000 troops from North Korea are being prepared to join Russian forces fighting against his country. The Ukrainian leader warned that a third nation wading into the hostilities would turn the conflict into a world war. Earlier, head of the main directorate of defense intelligence of Ukraine Kirill Budinov said that around 11,000 North Korean infantrymen were currently undergoing training in eastern Russia before heading to fight in Ukraine. They will be ready by November 1, the intelligence chief said.
The US is aware when and how Israel will respond to Iran's missile strike, US President Joe Biden told reporters ahead of his departure to Germany. As to whether the US is aware of what response Israel will provide and when it will take respective measures, Biden said yes and yes. Biden declined to share any details regarding Israel's planned response to the October 1st missile attack, though his remarks appeared to mark the first time the US indicated it has reached an understanding with Israel on the nature of the retaliation. Asked by reporters about the prospects of Middle East peace, Biden said he sees an opportunity that we can probably deal with Israel and Iran in a way that ends the conflict for a while, stops the back and forth. We think that there's a possibility of working for a ceasefire in Lebanon. It's going to be harder in Gaza, but we agree that there has to be an outcome. What happens in the days after? The president added without elaborating why he thought this way. On October the 1st, the Islamic Republic launched a massive missile attack against the Jewish state in response to the killing of senior officials from the Palestinian movement Hamas, the Lebanon-based Shia movement Hezbollah and the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Tehran said that 90% of the missiles hit their designated targets. Israel, in turn, said that Iran had fired some 180 missiles into the country, most of which were intercepted. The Israeli general staff vowed to choose the right moment to surprise Iran with a counterattack. Israel has decided on the targets it could potentially strike in Iran, according to Israeli television reports. According to Channel 12 News, the military presented a list of targets to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Defense Minister Yoav Gallant as it finalizes preparations, which include sensitive coordination with other countries in the region. A report by the Khan public broadcaster said the political echelon had decided on the targets without specifying which officials or decision-making forum. The targets are clear. Now it's a matter of time, an Israeli source told the broadcaster.